Hello, my name is Nick Huntington Klein. We are back yet again with more stuff from my book, The Effect, which is available for free on theeffectbook.net. You can also find links to purchase there. So in this most recent series of videos, we're talking about identification, the process of trying to take the analysis that you did and making sure that it actually answers your question of interest and not accidentally answers some other question that you're not as interested in. Uh, so in this video, we're going to take a, a, a quick example of a question that we might be interested in and see how the difficulty, see how some of the difficulties arise in trying to link up the analysis that we can do with actual data to answering that particular question. Uh, so we're going to talk about alcohol and health and mortality. Uh, so you've probably seen a lot of newspaper studies, like a, a, a study comes out, and a, a newspaper study comes out and says, a new study says uh, alcohol, uh, actually one glass of wine a day is good for you, or no, actually one glass of wine a day is bad for you, or no, actually alcohol is fine, or no, actually alcohol is the worst thing ever and you're going to die immediately if you take a sip, right? So there's lots of different studies that sort of have come to contradictory conclusions, and sometimes, not always, but sometimes when you get a lot of different studies on the same topic that come to wildly different conclusions, sometimes that means that they're analyses that you're, they're doing are not actually answering the question of interest, which is why they don't kind of give you the same answer, uh, because they're asking different questions, really, even if they are intending to ask the same one. So let's look at one example of a study that looks at the relationship between alcohol and mortality and think about some of the difficulties that they might run into in terms of identifying their effect of interest. So uh, the main question that they're interested in is looking at this, this thing about uh, one glass of wine a day or one drink a day is good for you. And this is something that you observe in data. If you look at data in previous studies, uh, you often find that the health ratings of people who have one drink a day are in fact higher than the health ratings of people who have zero drinks a day, who don't drink at all. Uh, and so from this, you might conclude that actually maybe having one drink a day is better for your health, is, is a has a positive causal effect on your health as measured by you know, your cardiovascular health or uh, your, your fitness uh, or how long you live, all these sorts of things. Ah, but there's the identification problem. Is this analysis that we are doing, the comparison of people who have zero drinks a day versus one drink a day, actually answering the question of interest, which is, does drinking one drink a day rather than zero make you healthier? And probably not. Here's a study from Wood et al. Uh, and they said, no, actually, hold on a minute, you're missing something here. Uh, you have missed an identification step. Uh, and in particular, that a lot of people who choose to drink zero drinks a day uh, are different for some other reason. Like some, maybe they just simply aren't healthy enough to be able to drink. So you might expect that their health rating would be low, but that is the thing that causes them to not drink at all as opposed to the other way around. Uh, people who don't drink at all also includes a lot of ex-alcoholics, right? And so if you were drinking very, very heavily for a very long period of time, that probably would continue to affect your health now, even if you are not drinking anymore. And so the comparison between people who drink nothing and people who drink one drink a day is not really uh, going to answer that question for you. It might be an interesting result, but it doesn't answer the question of does one drink a day make you healthier? So they account for this. Uh, in an attempt to identify the effect of drinking more on your mortality, uh, they try to remove that alternate explanation. So they look in the data at people who drink zero drinks a day and they try to get rid of the people who are just too sick to drink or ex-alcoholics all these sorts of things. And then they ask the question again, okay, uh, getting rid of that, do we see a, 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 a positive relationship between your uh, drinking and your health, at least for one drink a day? And they no longer do, right? So here's the graph that they have of the relationship between how much alcohol you drink per day, uh, which each dot representing roughly one more drink per day, and uh, your hazard ratio, the higher number here means less healthy. You're more likely to die soon. Um, but they don't really see much of an effect for the first few drinks uh, per week, uh, and then it starts to increase as you get past about 100 grams of alcohol uh, in a week. Uh, and so uh, that is accounting for one of the alternate explanations as to why we might see a positive relationship between drinking at least one drink a day and uh, and your health, right? But here we, we got rid of that explanation and that went away telling us that, hey, that that, that relationship that we saw did not identify our question of interest of whether one drink a day makes you healthier. Now, of course, this is only one alternate explanation that they have gotten rid of. There are certainly a number of other reasons why we might see a relationship in the data between your mortality and how much you drink. Uh, the decision to drink is related to a whole bunch of different background factors that themselves could be related to your mortality. Men tend to drink more and they tend to die sooner. 
uh, probably for reasons other than just drinking as well. And that, that goes for against you know across, uh, class and race and uh, location and region and everything and da, 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 da. all these different sorts of things are probably related to how much you drink and also your mortality. And so they do account for a number of those other things too. They adjust for things in their study uh, like racial background, for example. So that if there's a if that is what is driving the relationship that remains between drinking and mortality, then they've gotten rid of it. They've conditioned on that, uh, and the relationship that they have is after you account for that alternate explanation. Now this is good. They've, they've done. They've gotten rid of a lot of those alternate explanations. They still find that there's not that much of a relationship uh, for low levels of alcohol, but then once you get past a certain level, it starts to jump up pretty quickly in terms of the negative effects on your health. But they can't account for everything. Uh, there's always going to be some additional factor that they, maybe they didn't measure or control for, uh, at, least in, at least until they've done a super extremely careful job of getting rid of every alternate explanation, which is very hard to do. Uh, you could argue that given the list of things that they did control for, there are still some things left over. One way that you can see this, that there might be a couple things still left over in their analysis, is with this. So this is a graph that looks very similar to the other one, uh, but you'll notice that the y-axis has changed. Uh, so the x-axis, we're still looking at drinks per week, and on the y-axis we see uh, your probability of being a man. Uh, and so what we see, using the same methods that they used uh, in the study of alcohol and mortality, it looks like drinking more causes you to become a man, uh, which probably is not how that works. Um, so this suggests that maybe we've left some alternate explanation out there, right? Because how is this possible? Well, you know, if there's some other reason driving a relationship between these two variables, well, then we haven't accounted for that. Uh, and that would be one reason why we might see them related to each other. That does not answer our question of interest. We're pretty sure this result should be zero. It should be a flat line if it were talking about a causal effect. Um, uh, and yet it's not, which tells us that there that th if we know the causal effect is zero and we see a relationship that's not zero, we know there's something else going on. So taking that back to the alcohol and mortality graph, we see an effect that's not zero. Uh, so one of two things is, ha is happening. Either the effect, the causal effect is actually not zero, or maybe it is, and there's just something else going on. And this, ma this man and drinking graph suggests that maybe at least there's something else going on that we can't quite get rid of yet. So what do we, can we take away from all of this? Uh, if we want to identify the effect of interest, we need to think carefully about what the alternate explanations are and be able to get rid of them. In this particular study, they did think of some alternative explanations of why drinking and mortality might be related to each other, and they accounted for at least some of them. They accounted for the fact that among these zero drinkers include some people who might be very unhealthy for other reasons. Uh, and they also accounted for some demographic background factors, things like race, likely age as well they might have left some stuff out too. And until you've really narrowed down just the part that you're interested in, there's always going to be something left out. There's always going to be an alternate explanation. Uh, and in this case, it looks like they might have still left something out because using the same method, you can prove that drinking more causes you to become a man, uh, which probably is not true. This is what's known, by the way, is a placebo test where we look at an, a relationship that should be zero uh, if all of our assumptions are correct. And the fact that it is not zero suggests that we have maybe left something out of our analysis. All right, that is it. Uh, in the next set of videos, we're going to be talking about how we can actually do the process of figuring out how to do this. Because right now, I've just sort of told you what they did. Uh, but if you want to be able to identify an effect on your own, how can you do that? Well, that's what we're going to get to uh, as we continue on in the series. Thank you.